Hello! Okay. Hello? Say something, I'm giving up for you. All right. Hello, prehistoric bats, plastic bug, Thomas R, Joseph 777, John C, Cameron Steinlock, Robert White, Michael J. Lasseter, Stanley S, Christopher Lazo, Rhonda Adams, Stacey Hawkins, Jerry Collins, pretty good desires. Scott Cole, Hart, Thomas Hart. Greetings. Hi, everybody. You guys are awesome. Okay. Kim Deaton, Ken Salisbury, Fadian, Taryn Little, Ross Riker, Bravo, the usual crowds, and some extras. So, um,. That uh, opening image of me and the goat, it's not a lie, but that's just not what's happening right, right now. Like, right now is going to be something else. Uh, I poured up Karen. Karen is draining. So we'll have a Karen uh, tomorrow, probably, pro shizzle. Uh, and I'll work on Karen tomorrow night. I'm going to pour up real quick the uh, full murder jacket uh, which is here and another mask that I've got some right here okay Some things happening right now you can't see, but you're about to see this. This is how exciting it is. I'm just going to pour this into this. That's when I find out that's not enough latex. Only three quarters of the way full. Those are empty. Well, well, if you were, if you're not like a regular regular, then you would be one of the extras. Extras, extras are, you know what? They're very important to a production. Uh, extras are what make a movie big budget. Like low budget movies, they don't, they don't have extras. But extras, they make a movie, you know. They fill out the world. You're a world fuller, filler. Think that about yourself. That's a positive. Hello, Dave. Oh, very cool. I, too, also like the um, Monster Maker shirt. And that's one that I made because I wanted it. Like, I want that shirt, so I made it. So I'm going to... Goat fillers. Yeah, help one goat over fence. They call me Alan the Bridge Builder? No. Y'all just watched me blow my O-ring on YouTube. Now I gotta stuff this sucker back in there. Fixed it. Yes. Countdown two hours. 
two hours, starting now. That is how long y'all have me for. Or is it how long I have you for? All right, let's see what's going on here. Uh, uh, uh. More positive. That's right. Uh, I'm pretty blessed right now myself. I granted the world's a little crazy, but I live in a glorious cabin in the woods with a wonderful shop that I can just go and work in. And that is great. Hello, Mosato. I am good. Hello, Jesse Papa Bear. Glad you could wake up and join us. Now, uh, we're set up here. It's a very complicated life we have. We know that I cannot function without a beverage. I want to grab that. says that you can come visit Australia. It's the FBI that has the final say. So, you gotta remember that. So yeah, I'm gonna work on a goat tonight. Uh, I'm gonna take one of the goats, and um, I'm actually gonna take the goat without the third eye, but the one with the third eye was more available for a picture. We're gonna trim it, we're gonna base it, then maybe I'll start playing with the one with the third eye, time-wise, while the other one is curing up or drying. I think I'll need... Yes, I use my phone to record. Yes, I do. It is a Samsung Galaxy S8 Plus, and I'm pretty happy with it. Jen Daigle, awesome, very happy about that, glad you got that. Yes, almost every state does have a goat man monster. And I can't wait to get one of these guys done so that I can, uh, you know, maybe sell a couple of these things. I have one as a Yule goat that is, that is sold and one as a uh, goat man, which is an original character of someone's. And I, I did a modification to, to get his, so that's cool. Yeah, I think the goat could be really awesome. And there's a lot of options and things that I could do with it. Uh, you know what, I'm gonna move you to here. Because if you guys are here, and my monitor to read comments is right here, then this isn't like super awkward. But if I have to do this, and then this, and then this, and then this, then I'd have to go. Wonder Woman! Wonder Woman! I don't know, I'd like with the bracelets. I don't even have good bracelets like that. Capra Scorn! Four score and seven years ago, Capra Scorn murdered lots of people, and it was awesome. He did it with a giant axe. Because axes are cool. And swords are for humans. So update on the mold, it's a much lighter mold. It is much lighter, I'm, I'm by myself tonight, my wife is entertaining family. 
Uh, so if I wasn't here, I'd be hanging out by the fire pit in the pool with them. But I am here. And I got monsters to make. Uh, I found out it's a much lighter mold than most of my other molds. Um, we'll see how it wicks latex tomorrow. I did a two hour pour, just like I'm doing two other two hour pours. So I'll be able to judge its latex wicking ability against their latex wicking ability and I'll have a good idea. How did what happen? How did what happen? Did something happen? Monsters. Arr. Yes, I feel the outer shell is just as strong. Might be stronger. Uh, I definitely want to test it with Loctite based on the timing of uh, how long the foam took to cure. Well, Brandon, you weren't here. I tried to make a regular video, but I failed. Like, because I got almost to the end of the mold and I said, I want to do something crazy. So I shot, I mixed my plaster. It was liquid plaster. I shot great stuff into the plaster. I've been watching a lot of videos on Aircrete. And air creeds where you mix foam into Portland cement to make a light, foamy concrete. And, uh, well, I thought this foam is already in a can. So I shot that into, I shot a whole can into 32 ounces of water and then mixed that with plaster um, to, you know, cracked earth. Then I shot in the foam, a whole can of great stuff, and put that as my outer coating. It was kind of weird. Um, we'll see how it goes. For a while it felt like EVA foam and then it hardened up. I mean, if it works, oh, and uh, this is toast. This was an experience. See how crumbly that is? This was, this is, this was me getting plaster of Paris like one last chance. That, now it's my favorite Metallica song. El Garbaggio. Do 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 do. Basura, basura. El Garbaggio. Um, the mold did not really expand. It may have expanded a little bit, but not a lot. No, what I have on the Dremel, this is a felt felt wheel. It's a felt, it's a felt head bullet. I buy um, oops all felt heads from Amazon. It's like thirty of them in a case, and those are kind of my favorite. Hello, Alexander Castle. Um. Ezekiel, I kind of feel the same way. Uh, I really feel the same way. I don't, the only politics I want to talk in here is like the politics of monsters, you know? I'm cool, I'm cool with that. Um, the only spirited debate that I want is who would win in a fight, Wolfman or King Ghidorah? And uh, we all know it's Wolfman, so that's not even a debate. Take this head off and trim it as God intended, with my hand inside of it. So yesterday, I got a corona test. Um, there were, uh, we, we got test kits actually here at the house. Um, and my wife and I were both tested. Uh, it's a blood test. Neither one of us have it. But um, the person taking the test 
uh, they use like the automatic stabber thing to get blood. And my my fingers are so calloused, it took, uh, we, we used three of them and it didn't draw any blood. It just kind of, and but it didn't break my skin. Um, or it, I couldn't get enough blood out of that little tiny wound. So I had to come over here and get a razor blade and saw on my finger to get enough blood to do the test for him. Uh, both negative, by the way, but also no antibodies. So if there's a downside, I guess that's it. But you take a test to find out if you could be sick or have been sick, and it says that, hey, you're not sick. Well, that's cool. Sound of the Dremel makes you sleepy. Okay. A lot of people, it sounds like a dentist drill. They don't like that at all. Well, you weird. I got you. I hear you, fam. Probably too old to talk like that. I understand. You guys probably want to. Jeez, man, back off a little bit here. I want to see what you're working on. Not just your head. All right, so a couple little boogers on it. And I'm not even sure of how much exactly. Uh, like, I know all this is covered in hair, so, like, this is the third eye spot. It's just kind of a different color. But, yeah. I think what we'll do tonight is we will sculpt these teeth. See how they're, it's, uh, it's two plates that I'm going to glue teeth onto? I'm going to sculpt them flat on the table. So let's do that tonight. So that means I won't be painting. You know what? I, uh, I feel good. I feel very good this evening. I think that uh, everybody handles depression a little bit differently, and maybe I was a little depressed. And now I have a little more. Uh, I, it's hard to think that I don't, I feel like I don't have purpose or, or um, a destination because I'm always working and pushing, but uh, I feel better now. Okay, here we go. So, I spent a crap ton of money ordering samples of the t-shirts from Teespring. I'm gonna have so many awesome, colorful shirts. I'm very excited. I got the monster shirt in uh, like a lemon yellow. I like bright shirts. Sometimes, Pickle Hill, sometimes. Sometimes it's the other way. And I'm not saying that that's the case now, but sometimes family can make nuts. Sleeping on the vacuum cleaner, America's Funniest Home Video. Uh, I didn't, okay, I did not get uh, Beast Man because I actually have that little Beast Man in my office at work. He's on my computer monitor. But, they had a little Skeletor, I got him. Look at that little Skeletor. Oh, that's so cool. So let's open him up. I did get a little Skeletor here. Uh, Jesse Papa Bear, we are going for Skeletor in the background, like you can see. That Skeletor head right back there, yes. And uh, we're gonna make a hood for it, and it's gonna be awesome. Make a hood and a mantle. So a lot of people don't know this, but it's the packaging and the accessories that really let a toy hold its value. You know, yeah, so open your toys very carefully. Don't lose any parts. Because so 
Sorry, I'm trying to figure out how this goes together. It is smarter than me. Which is a common theme in inanimate objects that I purchase. You flea bitten buffoon! Yeah. Anyway, that's. We have a little skeleton. Little skeleton! Of course I opened it. If you don't play with a toy, then it's not, not fulfilling its destiny. I don't know if these guys are worth anything. I've never seen them before at a Walmart, but I saw them today. And I said, I must have it. Okay. Alright, so now Skeletor has joined my little... Uh, uh, I will paint one live, I just don't know when. What am I talking about? Oh, I, I bought a little Skeletor action figure. I should have bought two, one to open and one to save. But I'm going to save the one I opened. I don't want to retire on them. I just want to stare at them a little bit. Does it really work? Does it shoot necromantic energy? I don't think so. And I don't know, like, the power words to make it do it. What do you mean by does this staff really work? Like, that's a weird question. I've never, never been able to get G.I. Joe's little guns to fire or anything. As far as I know, Boba Fett's backpack never shot a rocket either. I think a lot of kids remember that, but it never happened. the very first try on of the goat. Newman, I think rocket shooting Boba Fett was a myth. I think he was a myth. No, uh, I mean, it, it doesn't have to stay still. If I want it to stay really still, I just stab it down a little bit more, and then it doesn't go anywhere. But I don't, I don't like drill any special holes or anything. People say that they had one. I don't think it was real. I think you're misremembering. Like you wanted it to fire. I think your brain told you it did. I don't think it did. No, all I'm asking about in latex. This is latex. This is not foam. All right. This is the first try out of the goat. See that I have no neck, and this has a bit of a neck. So if I were wearing it, I'd cut it. Kind of looks like Beta Ray Bill right now.
I may want to powder this or slit the back, but it can go on my head and it can be worn on my head, so maybe not. And people can slit their own, you know. Right. I pretty much had enough airflow and stuff. Uh, I'm gonna let's make some teeth for it. Yes, it's going to be a whole goat. Horns will make it a goat. Ticket shooting goat, both of them. Now I had I had a Darth Vader with the extending lightsaber. There was like a lock and you flip the switch and you slid it out. It didn't like shoot out, but... Okay. Um, let's get some tape. Look, hey. Yes, Brandon. Yes. How big around is your head? Because, like, I got this on. Obviously, you saw, but it's uh, it was snug going on. If I powdered it; it would be fine. Um, are you are you a big guy or not a big guy? I really want to make a goat man monster for this. Okay, five seven. How big around is your head? I'm five eleven, but I walk around at five eight because oh boy, you didn't hear the cracking that just happened. Played a hunchback for too long. Yeah, right right around your your brow bone. See, horror beauty. That's what I thought too. I don't think it was released to the public. I think it was only prototypes. But kids remember them. And Nelson Mandela didn't die in prison. And there's a couple other ones that happened like that. Everybody remembers it, but that's not how it was. I just pulled off a little piece of tape that I did not need. But, but, the other day I was given the awesome idea to flag my tool with tape. And Ezekiel said, hey Alexa, put orange tape on my shopping list, so I did it, because I'm a good listener, and now, now, I should be able to find my on the table faster and easier, that was a brilliant idea, what a great little tool hack. Okay, so, the, the plaster and foam mix that was on my gloves definitely expanded. So it did expand a little bit. Yeah, I too once had an athletic build. Uh, now I have an athletic build, but it's a sumo wrestler. They're still athletes, but it's different. I wish my lift lights ever were twice the length. Probably shouldn't have said that. Round is a shape. That's right, Ezekiel. 22.5 inch Kanagan. So neither one of these are this wide.
what I'm doing is I'm putting tape on here. I'm going to mark it. And then I'll know exactly how big to sculpt that tooth tray that I have to sculpt. And I'm just going to sculpt these teeth flat. Hello, Save Our Water. Uh, what I'm doing right now is I'm working on a Capra Scorn mask, which is a goat man creature. Uh, this one is destined to be like some kind of like a chaos warrior goat guy, which uh, is a pretty cool design. Not my design. But this one gets further customized. Uh, and right now, I mean, I sculpted a little plate to put teeth on. And this is me wanting to be able to replicate that plate size somewhere else. So use a little piece of tape. Now I know how big the base for that is. And I'll transfer this onto what I'm going to sculpt on. Oh, thank you, Save Our Water. I appreciate that. Um, it, uh, it's not easy, but what's hard about sculpting is letting go of what's in your brain and not allowing your brain to trick you into thinking what you have is finished. Um, all the time, it's like, well, what, what visual reference are you using? Our brain isn't good at holding details. So you have to accept that you're going to take all the details from other images and put them into this sculpture. It's not all going to come out of your head because your head isn't meant to hold this data. It's not what it's for. Uh, what I have to do is have to get a little board to sculpt off, which, of course, is around bake. I'll be right back. Here, we're going to inception it. And you guys, watch yourself write comments on the board while I'm gone. You could type yourselves a story. I'll be right back. I won't be long. Just got to grab a thing. Okay, I'm back. Hope you guys told yourselves a good story. Uh, the horns will be made of foam, most likely. The horns will be made of foam. Chewaki Moon is a cat creature. Yeah, please post that character design up there. Um, and I was actually, I really liked your uh, belt buckle and like some of your armor pieces. So I'm probably going to sculpt out your belt buckle, make a silicone mold, and make you one of those resin. Uh, that will not be at a charge. It'll just be fun to do. Because he has some cool armor elements to it, too. Babylon 5 did have a toy line.
Hoosier City. It's cat videos. I probably wouldn't say that in 1980. That's not like in my repertoire of things I say a lot. But, you never know. I'm full of surprises. Uh, Triclops is on my list, believe it or not. Uh, but also, I have a design for a Cyclops, and uh, that is going to make it onto my list for the Wednesday Sculptathon. Because there is a Cyclops design that I've never seen done, and that kind of came to me. I'm going to add that to my list as a possibility for the Wednesday Sculptures. All right, so now this here is a straightened out version of the bottom uh, line of teeth. Yes, they do. Uh, I actually have the uh, Super 7 um, Beast Man. They call it the Filmation Beast Man. I have most of the versions of Beast Man that's out there. And now I'm going to put, see, like this is, this is the bottom jaw. So what I'm going to do now is I take the top jaw and I put them, I put it the same distance away on this board that it is on the mask. So let's do that next. making sure it gets into the crevice. No one likes it when it's out of the crevice. Keep it in the crevices, kids. Keep it in the crevice. So, um, why am I excited about the Teespring store? Here's why, okay? Uh, I can make any kind of merchandise that we want, pretty much. Uh, like there's long sleeve t-shirts, there's hoodies, all that stuff I can make. And there's some surprises coming down the pipe too, which I think will be pretty awesome. Um, but I can make those. I don't have to, when I order traditional t-shirts, like the green t-shirts, um, we put out like 1500 bucks to buy the t-shirts to then sell the t-shirts and um, they were they were pre-ordered but you know um, we we don't just order well we carry a stock of shirts and when, when you carry a stock like that it's just gonna be it's more expensive teespring every three days they print a batch of shirts so Whatever is ordered for three days for the Stilt Beast stuff, they print it and they ship it out. So I make less money per shirt, um, but uh, I don't have, like Shannon doesn't ship those. There'll be no surprises in the packaging of the Teespring shirts because they're not shipped from us. But um, I think they're cool and they're unique. So I am excited about those. I think that's awesome. I think it's fun. What an opportunity. I need a measuring tape. So if I wanted to make the beaver shirt, 
I could just whip together the beaver shirt and then um, I could throw it up there. Okay. Three quarters, half, half. Thank you, Matra Art. Uh, yeah, Craig, I mean, that that's how it happens, you know? Brandon, where are you based out of? Like, what area of the country? Uh, no, there's not a setup fee for each design because it never actually, I do all the graphic design. I've done all the graphic design on them so far. Um, uh, there's no setup because I do all the graphic design work. I do all the setup work um, and they only print if someone orders. Uh, I order samples. I ordered samples, but, and those are just minus my profit. Hang on one sec, guys. Now this is the distance between the top jaw and the bottom jaw where the plates in. That means when I sculpt this, I'll have room for the teeth. I have to do a little bit of figuring out on the goat masks yet. Um, now, Brandon's is a monster honking custom goat mask and uh, it's got giant horns. Uh, he has some lofty goat fantasies. Uh, not in the worst possible way, but you know. Uh, and it's my job to help make his lofty goat fantasies come true. But, there'll be simpler goat masks that happen. And I think the simpler goat masks, because they're going to have horns, they're going to have hair, uh, we're going to figure out the eye situation. Um, they're they're probably going to be two hundred bucks, is my guess. Uh, that they might be less. We'll see. I appreciate that, Ezekiel. I appreciate that. Yeah, I didn't order a hoodie yet. You know what, though? I have one of the shirts in. Uh, one of the shirts I actually got my sample in already. The world needs more monsters. I'll go over and get that here shortly. Okay, so that distance apart they are in the mouth and now when I sculpt my teeth they'll line up right and like if I do the big bottom fangs like they have in some of them uh, that's gonna you know I'll make room for those right here with with the upper fangs uh, did you see the design uh, did Brandon uh, post it yeah it's also tons of black hair and Great big horns. Shipping will be a nightmare on this guy. Okay. So. Great. Uh, let's do some clay. Yeah, uh, it's a... Do you see the horns on that guy? That's going to be a monster. John C., thank you very much. I remember the Micro Machines vehicles, and I remember the figures, because they were in KB Toys. Back when there was KB Toys. Oh, 
Oh, warmonger. Making dentures, yeah. Um, the, uh, the mono acrylic for um, the dental mon the monomer stuff. That stuff uh, does have an odor. It's like you work in a nail salon. Um, no, there's not necessarily an upfront, there's no upfront charge. Now, okay, that I know of. Here's the thing. I was offered Teespring through YouTube. Uh, YouTube contacted me and said, your channel is doing well enough. We want to push merchandise for you. And here is Teespring. Um, here's your account. Link it to YouTube. So I'm able to do this because of you guys, because I have enough subscribers. There might be an upfront charge to start a Teespring. I don't know. I didn't have to pay it because YouTube thinks that you guys will buy shirts. Um, and I'm willing to bet that YouTube gets a cut of from Teespring, from their cut. That's my guess. Um, when I design a shirt, it, it always tell, it tells me this shirt costs this much and you, I mean, and you're going to charge this much here's your profit. Um, I never charge exactly what they say to charge because I'm like, man, 32 bucks for a t-shirt is too much. So I jack it down and you know, normally I'm making like $5 a shirt. But I'm not doing any work other than the original design. So I think that's fair, you know, because they're printing the shirt, they're shipping the shirt. So I'm okay with that. So I'm making about five bucks a shirt. When you buy a shirt from them, you're putting five bucks in my pocket. That's cool, you know, for me. And you get a shirt. Um, but yes, so I don't know how Teespring works otherwise. Mm -hmm. It was given to me through YouTube. So I didn't even know that Teespring was a thing. But uh, you'll see in the next couple days, it'll show up on my YouTube channel where I'll have a store on my YouTube channel. Now, let's do some goat teeths. So, so there may be a charge. Yeah, and there's a lot of companies who do that kind of same thing. Just Teespring is the one that is in bed with YouTube. time I specifically marked the tool so I wouldn't lose it. Just what I did. Yeah, I have some plans uh, to do, I mean, I like the Teespring stuff. Let's just say I have some plans for down the road. I, I think it could be cool.
I just wanted to mark my middle so I have a good lineup. Hey there, KBFX. So I want the lower teeth to be bigger than the upper teeth. Uh, yes, I will check my Instagram when I'm off this evening. Okay, so this, these are patterns for the goat's teeth. See I've got those blanks right there? So I'm going to sculpt this, the teeth here, and then I can mold them and I'll have latex sheet teeth that wrap around and glue on. But that also allows me to do a couple different kinds. So that is what I'm working on, KBFX. Guys, I apologize. Sometimes it's, I don't get messages right away. Um, it's, it's just, uh, I get a little buried. It's not that anybody is more important than anybody else. Um, it's just where things land, um, how busy I am at the time that message come in, comes in. And sometimes I might just see the message for a second, but then I have to remember what platform I saw it on or, and dig. Uh, and it, it takes a while to get back to folks. And a lot of what I do is, you know, I'm doing a, an, a, a Photoshop analysis of a sculpture, so that, uh, that takes a little bit. Um, BC, I don't know, and what I have to do right now because this first set of teeth is actually for Brandon. So now I have to go check my references. Right, right. Quick, Robin, to the goat fix. This has all the information that I need in order to uh, get this project done. Um, you have some sharp, sharp teeth. This is a very pointy toothed goat. He doesn't have goat-like teeth at all. This is a monster goat man. Therefore, I am happier with him. And if you look at this, see the four horns? That's, that's going to be nuts, you know? Uh, there's going to have to be a structure in there, but yeah, anyway, um, yes, let's, let's do that and then we'll do this because I just want to take a look. Yeah, see the belt buckle? This very chaos -y, kind of Satan-y belt buckle, uh, I'm going to go ahead and make also. I'm going to make it, I'm going to do a silicone mold and I'll make a resin one for Brandon. It's going to be like the size of a dinner plate. Sucker's a monster. Okay. That's right. The goat is judging you. That's what it does. 
Um, I actually, I like the top of the head, and I want the, the humanoid mask to sit on the bridge of the nose. I want those two contact points. Well, Brandon, your goat picture has very sharp teeth, like it, it's monster teeth. It, is that what you want, or do you want a top plate? Or do you want a top plate? Because going by the art that you sent me, and I'm not going to say that you're wrong, but you know, you know, it's your it's your mask. But the art you sent me is a monster. Oh, okay. You, you want your teeth, right? You want the teeth in your image. Here's what's so cool about this. A lot of the times when I'm making something for someone, they're on, and I can just talk back and forth with them. It's like a Zoom meeting with a peanut gallery about their project. It's kind of cool. Let's look real quick again. There are six teeth on the bottom and eight teeth on the top. They are sharp, and it looks like these outermost teeth are a little bit bigger. Um, yeah, okay. That's right, the peanut gallery. The Creeper Gallery, you should call it. I think my tripod is on its last days. <laughs> it's very loose at that connection point. Uh, hello, Best Buy. Uh, yeah, now that I know it's fangs, this is going to be a lot easier. The second, see, and I'll just keep this set up once I mold. I'll keep the tape, I'll keep everything here, and then I can do all the other sets of teeth that same way. What I'm doing right now is I'm just splitting a piece of clay into multiple pieces so that I can get fangs. And the reason why I did it this way is I can do several different teeth sets for this same goat head. Brandon is awesome, but if I had to put, you know, all this work in for just his mask, I'd have to charge more. Um, so by being able to alter the design like this with the teeth and in some other ways, um, I'm able to produce it for Brandon a little bit cheaper. and offer a different product for others. Hello, Pinshot 500. Good to see you on again. Uh, so, Enigma, that's a great question, and I don't have a great answer for you, because um, the nature of my work, normally most of my orders happen at that trade show in March that was canceled. 
So I'm working up until late August getting all those orders done for haunted houses. Um, I, I should do, you know, $40,000 in business, which is a large chunk of my year at that show. And when that didn't happen, that's why I'm kind of switching gears. I didn't have a great website. I had an okay website, but my wife is saving our butt because she learned how to build a website. And now I am getting orders through the website, and that's what's kind of carrying stilt beats and letting, letting us happen. Things are different, you know? I'm doing, instead of doing, you know, stilt costumes that I want to make, and I bring them in haunts and say, buy them if you want, if you don't, then don't. Um, now it's like, hey, you guys want a beast man that? I mean, I'm doing some, even some licensed characters. I brought out old molds like Frankenstein that I sculpted six, seven years ago um, in order just to generate the smaller sales. Um, yeah, but anyway, um, so I don't, I don't know. Normally I have some rush orders in September, but they're normally for full costumes, not just for masks. Uh, yeah, Brandon, um, that's why the ears are going to be separate. I'm going to have ear options. If I want to make this a monster kangaroo, I can. If I want to make this a, um, in all honesty, it's close enough in head shape, I could make this a bunny mask. I could make this uh, like a, more like a desert jackrabbit type mask. Yeah, what I normally do is after haunt season, that's when I start my design phase. But right now, I'm in this cycle where I have to design and uh, create and all that. Uh, like right now, I have to do it all at the same time. I have, you know, mold pours running in the other room, and I have sculpts happening in here. I have molds happening. I'm, I'm kind of having to do it all. This is not me complaining. This is not me complaining. Uh, hallelujah, I am blessed. I am doing what I love for a living, and I'm still finding a way to make it work when there are other guys out there who aren't as, for some reason or another, they're not able to switch it up as fast, and they're really suffering. Uh, so I'm not complaining, but things are different. Make a rabbit mask eating a bat for my needs. Exactly. A kangaroo. Nice. Uh, Scott McDowell, you are absolutely right. And I'm also accepting enough of these uh, smaller orders. And I, I don't mean that in a derogatory way at all, but it, a a two, a $300 or $500 mask set is a smaller order than two $1,500 stilt costumes. Um, and it's just, and, it, and it's different. Uh, also, this setup, a lot of this work is me. When it's uh, stilt costumes and things, that's when I pull in Casey, uh, Stacy. Uh, I pull in Stacy. I pull in Rob. I pull in, you know, whoever I can to get to help to make that whole project come together. These masks, they're all me. So I, <laughs> I'm, I'm putting in my hours during the week for sure. But it's also stuff that I. Casey's my sister actually. And uh, I talked to her on the phone today, and I normally don't do that. But, anyway. Um, yeah, Casey is my sister. Yeah, what I was saying was, yeah, I mean, this is just a very different year. So, how many masks will I make this October? I don't know. Am I going to be working at a haunted house? I don't know. I hope so. Uh, I'll be doing some haunted house on the weekend. Somebody's going to be open somewhere. Even if it's not me, I want it to be me. Just have to see what happens. So with these guys, I'm putting on the outer fangs first.
Uh, you know what? I I don't want to be a diva. I want to I want to be reasonable. Um, I want to have pricing that is pretty transparent. I want you to look at my work and say, okay, that's going to cost about this much. Wow, Harry Beastie. Yeah, I mean, that's that's something to uh, to think about. Um, we, uh, I found out, like I didn't, obviously, you know, we found out, I think, two weeks before Trans World Trade Show was supposed to happen for us. Um, I did not have a situation where I was in trouble, like being stuck there. If, if I had traveled there and had to turn around and come back, um, I would have been out another probably $5,000. So it was kind of a, they were very kind to call it as early as they did. Enigma, can I give you any small or lesser known tips to sculpt faster overall? Yes. So first off, water-based clay. Water-based clay is speed. Second, um, study your source material and your references before you even go in. And in your design phase or your conception phase, sculpt that mask in your head five or six times. I don't touch clay until I've already built it three or four times in my head. Um, that's because, and, and what I mean is physically see, mentally see yourself putting clay on the form. What do I build out first? What do I build out second? What do I, you know, at what stage of form development do I move on to secondary forms? Do all of that in your head, and when you get to the clay, you're going to fly. Um, I do that, you can tell on a Wednesday night if I have visualized that sculpture or not because of how long it takes me or how it doesn't take me. Um, it, it's, it's that big of a difference. Visualize yourself doing it. Where do you put clay first? When you look at your reference pictures, don't look at them like they're a picture or like they're art. Look at them like they're a sculpture. Look at this cheekbone and think about how to do it in clay. Look at this cheekbone and realize that it's two planes. There's a plane here that does this. There's a plane here that does this. So you can visualize flattening this out and flattening this out. Um, for, for a fat guy, I still have some angles in my face. You know, I have some curve in my face too. I have some, you know, in here that's a lot rounder than it used to be. Look at that stuff in your sculpture and break the shapes down into clay chunks. Break the shapes down into chunks of clay. Is this a worm of clay that you put on here and then you leave this end open? Or is this a blob of clay and then you hollow it out with a sculpting tool? Figure that out before you get to it. And doing that will make you way faster. Masks for extended times. Yes, very long way to go. Yeah, references help you dial in because our brains just don't hold that information very well. Your brain does not want to hold every detail of an image. It, it, it wants to conserve its data wants to conserve its storage. Alexa, what time is it? 
The time is 9.27 p.m. Okay. Alexa, do I have a timer going? You have 53 minutes left on your two-hour timer. Okay. Julie B, thank you, that's very kind. What is, what, what is Spambot? It's Spambot? Who's a Spambot? Yeah, a lot of folks did get stuck in different places. I was going to go to a show here the weekend that we went shelter in place. I don't think Save Our Water is a spam bot. Do you think Save Our Water is a spam bot? Save Our Water, are you a spam bot? Been a very nice spam bot. Good night, big dog. Yes, I was giving nose picking instructions. You can do it wrong, you know. Nose picking injuries are no joke. It's the fastest way to get to your brain. Uh, hello. We have had some weird folks show up. Save our water, what's your favorite color? I'm just saying, horror beauty, if you don't know about nose picking injuries, maybe you don't want to Google it. Maria, I'm kind of in the same boat. Uh, um, I just, I often have to think about one project while I'm working on another. Not uncommon for me to be doing something but I've already built it in my head so I can spare my brain power for my next project that I'm thinking about while I'm working on that one. Or I'm thinking about it while I'm at a restaurant with my wife, which is not as popular with my wife as you might think. I have the most tolerant wife in existence. Now, hopefully tonight, you guys found this um, patterning tutorial kind of that I did for the goat new. I don't think I've shown that as far as a piece of a mask and being able to pattern it. And all these teeth need to get shaved down quite a bit. Maybe the loop tool. Uh, Enigma, most of it is in coloring. Most of it is in, in makeup, uh, simply because, you know. Tuck works, it does make sense. Um, I think you should verse yourself in both. Make sure that you're able to both build up and take away. Tarantula, I'm going to tell you that the reason you can't concentrate on one thing is because you have a hundred projects laying around. Find a lot of those projects and just give up on them and say, I'm letting this go because I'm never doing it and throw that all that crap away. That's going to, that's going to close an open loop in your brain because your brain, even though you're not working on those projects right now, your brain, those are open file drawers. And you can't run around the room because you keep bumping into these open file drawers. Uh, you have to close some of those drawers in order to be able to concentrate on more things. Maybe you have a flavor of ADD that makes it a little bit different or special. However, um, doing that, being able to let go of a project that you're not going to get to or that isn't important is huge 
in keeping your life organized. Um, there are projects that I do let go of. There are projects that I have to tell myself, I am going to do this one day, but I am putting a pin in it right now, and I'm not going to worry about it or think about it until it shows back up on my calendar. And then I can go into my Google Calendar in two years out or whatever, put a date down. And I know I'm going to get reminded about that project and I can let it go. And then it's not taking up any space of my brain. Those are open loops. And just like tabs on a computer, the more tabs you have open, the slower you're going to process. Uh, yeah, we can zoom in on my work. I'll tell you, it's not good right now. Um, too many projects will ruin your life. And they will make, they will trick you into thinking that you are a bad artist. And that is what I don't like about them. You are not a bad artist. You are not organized. You are not focused. Lasers are only powerful because they're focused. I'm only good at what I do because I knew what I wanted to do for a living at 10 years old. And then I applied myself to it. Uh, if I didn't know what I wanted to do at 10 years old, I would be fumbling. I was focused. Tarantula, at, to, to a degree, I think you can. And I think you should do it as much as you can. I'm not always right. No, please don't think that. And I can say something that is right for me, but is wrong for you. If Tarantula knows that, uh, that what I'm saying is wrong, I just ask them to consider it. Consider it. I am not always right. I am not a god of prop making or of Halloween. I'm just a guy who likes to make monsters, and I'm focused enough to be able to share with you my process. That's it. That's all that I am. I'm not always right. Now I'm really going in and starting to sharpen these teeth. So I've got my tool with like the thinnest wire on it. Because these teeth have to coexist. Um Enigma, I use, uh, I make my own prosthetic transfer material. I make my own. And I prefer um, prosthetic transfers, prose transfers.
Um, Enigma, yes, I probably can. Uh, I will do a prose transfer video. There are so many makeup channels on YouTube, I normally don't do a lot of makeup stuff because I think a lot of that information is out there. But it is possible that you just like the way that I teach and you want to hear it from me. That's possible. To a degree, I will also say with, I'm, I enjoy teaching and not everybody who knows stuff enjoy teaching. Thanks, James. I'm working on teeth. These are bottom teeth. These are top teeth. Uh, they, I've heard when you are editing writing or when you are editing a video, you have to do something called kill your darlings. And uh, as artists who think of different and new projects all, all the time, we kind of have to edit what we're going to be able to create whether it's songs uh, like Ezekiel or whether it is um, haunted house sets and ideas that I want to do, but maybe I won't ever get the chance, it's okay. I don't mind giving those ideas to other people and say, hey, you do this. I have people all the time, you know, who come to me for ideas. Uh, okay, I have plenty. That's, that's not the issue. If your issue is you don't have ideas, maybe you shouldn't be doing this work. Now, I'm not saying you shouldn't be. I'm just saying maybe. Whenever I see a haunted house vendor and their post is, I'm going to make stuff for haunted houses, what should I make? I kind of worry a little bit because I don't think that's the right mindset. I think you should have done the work enough to know what we need and then offer it to us. But this, that's the Allen way of doing things. And that may not be the best way for everybody. And that's okay. Soap cutting videos. <laughs> making teeth videos. Dead end, I think that you will. Oh, hey, yes, I have worked with foam latex. Warmonger, what area of the country do you live in? Uh, don't eat clay, Brandon. It's bad for your colon. As, by the way, if I miss a comment, just repost it. Just repost that comment because uh, I'm not necessarily going to see everything because it's, it's spinning. Well, thank you, Lisa. That's very nice. Rodney, I have a lot of irons in my fire myself. Well, I did put a piece in my mouth, but I did not swallow. Kind of pulled a Clinton on that one. Did not inhale. I merely put the clay in my mouth. I wanted to soften it. You're in Pennsylvania. How's your humidity? Because humidity is huge for, uh, for foam. Humidity is probably the number one factor uh, of success on foam. Uh, 
Uh, Ken, right now there is not a haunt trade show that comes to Toronto. There is not. Uh, there used to be one in Guelph, but uh, there is not. There's not. And the one in Guelph shut down because uh, they were fighting. Politics, man. Ruins everything. Just saying I didn't swallow the clay. That was all. That wasn't that bad. He said he didn't inhale. Clinton was more than a dude who cheated on his wife. He also played a saxophone. I'm in Texas. I'm in Dallas, Texas. When I saw Clinton play the saxophone at his inauguration, I thought, that's a cool guy who I'd like to hang out with. I'm not sure if he should be president, but uh, I really, I wouldn't mind hanging out with him. I've always wanted to learn how to play the saxophone. Oh, 1980. We still let you on here. I'm not sure why. I don't know if Texas is brutal. Uh, I enjoy Texas. But I also like to fight recreationally. We're, uh, we're near Dallas. We're about an hour away from Dallas. No one knows of the town I live in, except for those who know the hit song, Wolfman of Quinlan. Quinlan, Texas. About an hour east of Dallas. That's what folks know. Okay, now I'm going to flip it over so I can work on these teeth a little more. 100 creepers watching. Holy moly. Just, you know what? I can also move the camera. I don't have to move my board around. Smirk. I'm the smirk. So I'm also, this, this is like reminding me, I'm looking into all the things I need and the materials that I need in order to start making my own teeth. Like I sell bite mares, but I, every tooth company has things I'm not happy with. That's cool. Oh, Carrollton, that's not too far. You should visit your buddy and come hang, swing in by the shop. Say hey. Not right now, because you might have the Rona, but once things clear up. Now, I'm working on just those bottom teeth right now, but I have to start thinking about the relationship between the bottom teeth and the top teeth. Uh, so, Ken Salisbury, um, my favorite mask I've ever done is my next mask. If you are the happiest with something that you did years ago, or even too long ago, then I don't think you're going to be really happy. 
So my favorite mask is the next one. I'm excited about the next mask I get to work on. Now there's a lot of masks in my past I'm happy with, but my excitement and my love and my joy is that next project. And that's what will keep me working and keep me going forward. Uh, Tarantula, most people know me from plastic melting, oddly enough. Uh, I have a video called um, Corpsing or, or How to Corpse or something. Um, and I teach a technique called plastic corpsing. Maybe that's what the video is called. And in that, I melt plastic over a skeleton to look like organic tissue. And that video is how most people got to my YouTube channel. They saw that one or they saw one about a graveyard statue. That's what got them started on my channel. So yes, I do some plastic melting. Goodbye, save our water. You would be welcome, Ezekiel. See, not uncommon at all for folks that have found me through those those two videos. They're they're pretty big. All right, so this is how we're looking right now. Like that's the bottom teeth. Uh, they're not, you know, detailed out yet, but we're getting there. And now I got to start thinking of the relationship between them and the top uh, teeth. Cool, Rachel. It's another good one. Yeah, it's the same. It's the same. And I don't think you're an idiot. I have to have enough space in between these teeth for you to breathe effectively. Now, because there's so much hair on this, I will be able to cut extra breathing holes and just have the hair cover it. Because this looks like the kind of costume that someone might LARP in or something like that. So, you know what, I'm gonna get a little spatulator Right, came for the plastic melting, stayed for the goat teeth. <laughs> Animated toy turned into a cage creature. Yeah, you know what? That is probably one of my most underappreciated videos. As I may make you motion sick. All right, I'm just gonna go grab a tool. So, Rodney, right now, like you watch on Wednesdays, that's how I decide my next sculpt. Um, I have a list, and then we work on it. Um, we narrow down the list. Uh, I'm going to make everything I want to make. And everything on my list, uh, I'll make eventually. But I let y'all pick. Right now. I'm actually going to have another robotic toy video here coming up, which I think you guys will enjoy. Uh, this is a little, like, bladed spatula metal tool. I'm going to see if I can use it for what I want to do.
fangs. Man, that's so cool. I'm so glad I get to do fangs on this goat. Simply because fangs are cool. And goat teeth are cool, but they're not like fang cool. Monster goat is better than like a regular goat in my book. So all this is in place, and then I'm trimming it to what I want. I tend to put on heavy and then subtract. Rodney, you could of course borrow the creepers. I'm going to uh, go real quick and scroll back to the ninja, and I'm also going to Awesome. I actually have an update plan on the uh, statue. Hang on a second, guys. I'll be right back. I have an update plan on the statue where I'm going to do it how I would do it now. Just some things have changed, some materials have changed, so... I did not make that tool, I got it in a sculpting tool set, chat. Sixteen hours. The most I've ever spent on a sculpture is sixteen hours. Yes, you can borrow the creepers. Uh, yes, I've done a predator mask. I've done three. One I have done on a live video. Uh, and I have made the helmet and I have not made the helmet. I've done both. Who would I like to meet that I haven't? I'm thinking. Uh, Ted Haynes. Ted Haynes is a, uh, he's one of the teachers on Stan Winston's School of Character Arts, which I recommend their program, by the way. The Stan Winston School of Character Arts. He's a teacher on there. He teaches fabrication. And I would very much like to meet him. Um, he has taught me a lot, so I would like to meet him. That's right, 1980, and you're darn fine at it. Sometimes I even listen to you. Your opinion matters, 1980. It's your jokes I worry about. I could probably rig some LEDs into the next one, Gregory. Uh, yes, I have done Infinity Mirror builds, absolutely. Awesome, bonsai planters. Yes, uh, well the videos are long because they're detailed. All right, so now I'm caught up so I can come back over here. When the messages go by too fast, I'm going to lose them just because of the nature of 
my work is pretty detailed and it's right here in front of me. Uh, so infinity mirror builds. I can talk about those for a minute. Um, in 2002, I did a haunted trail based off of the uh, Mines of Moria. And in the mine shaft, I took 55 gallon drums and I used the mirror set up to do like an endless hallway, but they were all mine shafts. So off of the main shaft were all of these fake tunnels that looked like they kind of went on forever. Uh, good night, Jerry. It is indeed good to have people thinking of you. Uh, it's possible, Stanley, but that's kind of one I would need a, a big project for. It had a cave troll. It was a, it was a fun haunted house. It had a stilt cave troll towards the end. That was my chainsaw at the exit. You know what? Anything I could do with Ed Edmonds would be awesome. I would love to work with him. Him and Marsh are just good people. Uh, tut works, we normally sell them. Funny or scary things that actually happened to me while I was at a haunted house. So, I worked at a place called Terror on Church Street. And at Terror on Church Street, uh, it was in Orlando, and it was downtown Orlando. Uh, uh, uh. Seeing a lot of them set up. I got it, Stanley. Well, I worked at Terror and Church Street, and um, probably once a month, a Saudi Arabian prince would come, and he would, yes, they would come through Terror and Church Street, but also they would um, come to Disney, and they would rent like a whole floor of one of the Disney hotels. And, you know, that's that's so much money. And they would stay for, like, two weeks. You know, they'd be there a long time. Well, they would also come to Terror on Church Street. And when they would come through, it would be uh, one of the princes or, or, you know, their entourage. And in front of them would be a group of guys with fanny packs. And behind them would be a group of guys with fanny packs who were his security. And when I was the Wolfman one night, and I'm not seeing any messages right now because I'm working on the teeth and I am telling a story. Uh, when I pick my head up, I will look at the messages, but right now is a bad time to pose me a question. Um, so the guys with fanny packs were security. Uh, there was, and what their, their modus operandi would would be that they would, of course, buy their tickets and they would pay to stop the show. Uh, they would pay to stop the show. And the uh, prince would then go through and they would go through twice. The first time, you would scare him. And the second time, he would come through and tip a $100 bill to every person who really got him good. 
Uh, one night, um, I, my job there for most of the time I was there was I was a wolf man, and I was able to move around between scenes and just find a home. And so I was able to jump out and get him a bunch. You know, I kind of followed the group around, and he closed down the show for everybody else. So really, that was my only option. I made seven hundred dollars one night in tips. Um, in tips from just his group. Another night, uh, I jumped out to scare him, and he fell down. And I pressed the attack, where you know I really charged him good. And when I got done scaring him and looked up, there were two guns drawn on me. And there, there was guns pointed at my head and a gun pointed at my, uh, at, at my torso. And uh, I thought, well, okay. And then the, luckily the, the prince started laughing and, uh, and, you know, and I kind of retreated back and then uh, he tipped me $200 that time because uh, they almost shot me. Working at Terror on Church Street, I scared Alice Cooper, I scared Tom Savini, I scared Femke Jensen, I scared George Clooney, I scared uh, Shaquille O'Neal, lots of uh, famous people when they were in Orlando would go through there. Yeah, if they weren't silver, I'd be okay. <laughs> I'm not testing that theory. Now I'm using this tool to sort of push back in the gum line. Uh, well, he didn't think he would scare either, and he kind of got pissed off when I scared him. It happens. Uh, there are some people who don't want to get scared. Um, when, when you have... The scaring people was 40 hours a week. You know, that, that's what I did. Uh, that was my job. Punch the time card, scare the people, unpunch the time card. So... Um, and there is a place called uh, Mosquito Hall. And that is where I scared Tom Savini the best. I scared everybody there. You kind of climb the wall and a motion sensor and a light would go off and then uh, I would be up in the ceiling and I would jump down just as the light was going off. And if you timed it right, you could make anybody scream in that section. This tool right here is a Kemper W21. A Kemper W21. Kemper W21, one of my favorite sculpting tools. Well, I think he thought he was just paying to go through, see the sets, and do something spooky. Uh, yes, I've been hit plenty of times. Uh, Philip Earl, I actually don't like telling a lot of stories simply because it's kind of, I feel like I'm an old man telling war stories, you know? Whatever stories I'm telling, those, those were not the best days of my life. You're seeing the best days of my life right now. And if they weren't, I would work to make them so.
Now I'm going to switch it back this way. Now, I, I had met actually Tom Savini before that. I actually sold his daughter a pair of stilts, and he remembered me for a long time as the guy that he bought stilts for his daughter from. Um, and uh, he, he's always nice to me. I've met him several times. Um, very nice guy uh, to me, but I know that he's been not nice to some people, uh, but I have not had that experience. I don't think he likes fanboy people. I think he would prefer... I think he prefers folks who think... I don't know. I just, I just don't think he likes fans. I think he likes people. Good night, Tarantula. Um, I think that the Amazon affiliate deal is waiting on me. And I have to put in all the products. Um, and I just, there, I haven't done it. Let's be honest, I haven't done it. Why haven't I done it? Well, I haven't done it because just sitting there doing that, I haven't had a lot of time to do. Right now is the time of egregious hustle. Spending time working and recovering. And you know what? I love both of them. I met Bazzi Gogos. I met um, Mikey Rotella. And I met Jordan Shell. All very nice guys. Uh, so... One of the things that, what you guys see me do the most is this. This is my strength. And I want you guys to understand that most of the time when you watch me, I am at my strongest because I'm doing something I'm good at. A lot of the behind the scenes stuff, I couldn't get my website going to save my life. Uh, my wife did. Um, I'm just, I'm not as good at that. I was, I got very frustrated with it. Um, the, the Amazon affiliate, that's all my fault. Um, now it's in a spot. I think she set up the account. I have to go in and put in all the products. That's something that I'm bad at. Taking the time to do that. Because if I am online, I'm going to be chasing a rabbit hole, learning about air creep that I might use seven months down the road on a project um, because that's what my brain wants to file away and know and learn about and do. And uh, my brain doesn't want to sit on Amazon knowing that it could make me a little bit of money. My brain doesn't want to do it. So, yeah. Uh, you guys see me at my strongest. You guys think I'm awesome. But every time you see me, I'm doing what I love and I'm doing what I'm best at. So you might have an unfair view of me and how awesome I am because that's when you see me. And why am I telling you this? Is it because I want you to think I'm less awesome? No. I want everybody to realize that you see yourself all the time. And you see yourself when you are awesome and when you are not awesome. Do not compare yourself to me, not because I am more awesome than you. Don't compare yourself to me because you only see me when I'm awesome. Stacy gets to see me sometimes when I'm not awesome. So she knows I'm not that awesome. Um, when you see me doing this, I've done this for... 30 years. I should be decent at it. If I'm not, I worry. So, I want to work on it right there, so let's move the camera. 
just uh, never think you're not awesome because you can't do the things that I do because you only see me when I'm awesome. You guys are all very nice to me. Just understand, I am also a human. I also fail. I fail, I don't fail a lot of this, because this is what I do. But there's other things that I fail at. Okay. Yes, Capra scored teeth. Oh, wood ticks. Um, I would sculpt some giant wood ticks. Alexa, what time is it? The time is 10.15 p.m. Alexa, how much time is left on my timer? You have six minutes and 30 seconds left on your two-hour timer. Yeah, I got six minutes. So you see how these teeth are getting dialed in? Top teeth, bottom teeth, top, top teeth, bottom teeth. All right, that's the bottom, that's the top. There we go, bottom drum pull, on the top. Um, I would do a silicone two-piece mold, Philip Earl. Philip Earl is also one of our uh, talented actors at Dark Hour. So now I'm taking a silicone tips tool and I'm smoothing these teeth out, uh, which is going to put a little bit of a shine on them. All the surfaces from the uh, the texture, you know, that little wire loop that I used to shape them had texture on it. Uh, it was a, like a guitar string loop, basically. Uh, the texture is not, it makes it very matte. So when I take the tool and I shape it, I get a little bit of shine. See how these teeth have a little bit of shine and these don't? You think we're awesome. We're good, good to have you in the group. Uh, Jesse? Practicing dentistry without a license is illegal in the state of Texas. It actually isn't in the state of Florida, oddly enough. In the state of Florida, I had no problem buying materials to make teeth. In Texas, it's very hard to get the materials to make teeth. There was a dental supply place off of uh, Colonial Drive that I would go to to get all my tooth making stuff. When you are a 18 to 22 year old special effects artist type guy living in Orlando, working at a year on haunted house, 
making vampire teeth is one of your side hustles. That's awesome, 1980. There could be a reality show on home dentistry. Maybe you get like a license at the end of it as your reward. Do it like the face off. Now, Dan, you're gonna have to shoot me an email and then I can shoot you a price. getting real close to the time I've got to pour out um, the uh, full murder jacket as well as the female zombie that I poured up. Uh, we're getting closer on these teeth. Let's actually brush them out again. I'm going to brush these gums. Make the gums look a little more worn but they had lips sliding over them the whole time. And that erosion even shows up on flesh. So I don't mind brushing these out quite a bit. Karen dwelled for two hours earlier today. Right before we started, I poured, right when we started, I poured her out. So next set for these, step for these teeth is I'm actually gonna pour, I'm gonna do a uh, plaster mold on them. From the plaster mold, I'm going to make a uh, latex set of teeth. And these may not be their final form, but I'm, I'm pretty close. A lot of cleanup. No, I haven't seen a full murder jacket painted yet. Well, I did see one painted, but Renee painted it. She bought a blank, and then she got to finish one before I got to finish one. And hers looks amazing. Hopefully she'll post it on the Creepers page. Alexa, stop. But uh, I, uh, I have one poured up so that I can work on him tomorrow night. I'll get these guys finished. Uh, tomorrow during the day, I hope. It's tough when I have family here, you know. I need to be part of their activities and stuff. All right, so anyway, this is where we're at right now on these teeth. You saw them go from very rough. Uh, you know, they get a little bit more shaping and stuff, but um, we will, we will work on them a little bit more. Okay, hold on. I'm sorry, guys. See that? Look at that right there. Anyway, yeah, so I'll get those reshaped. Um, yeah, see? As, as Gray would say, bad hops, or whatever she says. Anyway, um, that's teeth. All I'm doing is pouring out masks. You guys don't have to see that. You know how that goes. Um, it would be a nasty bite wound. What I have to do to keep these guys safe, all right, this is a very moist rag. I don't want them to dry out. So I'm gonna put this wet rag on top of them. Lots 
of moisture right there. I might even give it a little more moisture. It's moisture, it's something that's very moist. And then I'll take some plastic, I'm gonna put some plastic on top of it. And I wanna seal in the moisture. You guys are awesome. Thank you for hanging out. Thank you for uh, chatting with me. This has actually been really nice. Uh, I don't know why this felt so low key, but uh, nice night. Thanks for hanging out. You guys are awesome. Thanks for watching me make stuff. You go make stuff.